I greet you from London, England, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I have just come to hear of the extra lockdown rules in South Africa, which throws us as a church into another whirlpool. But when the devil moves, God moves better. So here we are again, speaking to you via social media. Without much ado, I would like to announce my title, Order and Disorder. Order and Disorder. My opening scripture is going to be from Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, I'd like to read verses 17 and 18. Luke 10, 17 and 18. And the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. My thought is going to come from the next verse. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. In other words, the Lord Jesus is saying to them, there was an order before. And under this order, the Lord Jesus says, I was fully in charge. But this order came when Satan, whom we will identify today through the scriptures, sowed disorder in heaven. And I want you to notice how Jesus says, I saw him fall as lightning. That is why among the Satanists, their symbol is that of a lightning. And I'm very sure my technicians will be able and equipped to give you that sign. That sign sometimes appears on electrical boxes what we call DOB's distribution box. The fall of Satan and the beginning of disorder is also recorded in Isaiah 14, 12. Some scriptures I will read with you, others I will just refer to. By so doing, I want to leave you with a little bit of homework. The prophet says, if I do it all for you and put the scriptures and the quotes for you on a platter, I'll be spoiling you. I'll be taking away your time to Bible read. But in Isaiah 14, 12, I am interested in the words of Isaiah when he says, how art thou fallen from heaven, Lucifer? Jesus said, I saw the devil fall. Here's another identification. Christ calls him Lucifer from the word which is to do with light. And therefore, Lucifer. But I want you to notice, Isaiah calls him 
son of the morning. I used to wonder for many years why this adverb, this distinguishing point is used to identify the devil until I came across a quote from 550311, the seal of Antichrist. If you punch in the words, Lucifer first, the quote comes up where the prophet then throws light on the statement why he is called son of the morning. You know that when night has passed, before the sun comes up, there is a star that comes at first in the natural. The prophet is therefore hinting that when Satan was created, he was the first of the created angels. And he was no ordinary angel. He was an arch angel. So God identifies him as son of the morning, meaning the first one that I created among the angels. It is when you read that Isaiah 14 carefully, we have done a thorough study at the Willows, Pretoria, South Africa, that the devil had five desires. And among these desires was to be worshiped as God. So he went among the stars of God, another adverb for sons of God, but Job 1, verse 1 tells you, there was a time when the sons of God gathered. So the devil went among the sons of God. Later we will show you Ezekiel 28, where the sons of God are called stones of fire. And then we will go to Peter, 2 Peter, where he tells us we are living stones. All these scriptures put together by a revelation identify that Satan went among the other angels to sow disorder. That's why our Lord Jesus in John 8 44 calls the devil a liar and the father of lies. In another place, he's called murderer from the beginning. The first physical murder was Cain murdering Abel. That is a great statement in that it reveals to us who his father was. And the first one to ever lie in the garden of earth, on earth, Garden of Eden was the serpent. Again, we are told that Satan is a liar from the beginning. Now, when you read Isaiah 14, 16, the Bible says we are going to see Satan, the devil, Lucifer, one of these days. And nowhere does the scripture identify him as a three-hoofed goat with the horns and the fork. The scripture calls him Isaiah 14, 16. We shall say, is this the man? You see, later when Pilate introduces our redeemer, in John 19, verse 5, Pilate says, Behold the man. 
The devil is the man. Christ our Lord Redeemer is the man. And it is these two who were in the beginning when war started in heaven. I regret to say that there is a movement, I won't say what country, and this church or churches are now adopting a very strange position. They are saying we are the neutrals. We stand neutral between Christ and the devil. They fought from the beginning. The war continues on earth because the greatest battle ever fought is in the mind. The devil went for Eve's mind. God went for faith in the heart. So they are saying, we want to be neutral. We are neither for God nor for the devil. That is such a lie. There is no way you can be neutral in anything. By not confessing Christ, you have automatically confess the devil because the Bible says with the heart man believes and with the mouth he confesses it so you can't be neutral you've got to say something when this thought came to me I pondered deeply as to of the many sermons that I still have unpreached yet what would be beneficial at this time? COVID, closure of churches, closure of this, closure of that. Having flown to London here, took me from when I got up from my bed to when I put my head in another bed, 36 hours. A journey that takes only 11. 11 hours. Why all this? COVID rules here, COVID rules there. Arrive at that airport, be quarantined for a while, produce your certificates of COVID free, vaccinations, heckle and be heckled, then move to another airport. Same thing repeats, land here in the UK. Stand in the queue for an hour and more, and then it starts all over again. Who is behind all this? While we know that God says, can a lion roar and I don't know about it? God knows everything. He worked this whole thing out for the good of his people. But certainly the devil has a hand in it too. Now let us return to order versus disorder, disorder versus order. You see, when you read the scriptures, you know that God is topmost, he is the supreme. Below him, God had archangels. So when Satan took a certain proportion of angels, and John is going to tell us in the book of Revelation that with a tail that Satan told, he took 200 million angels with him. That is no child's play. But God's order was God himself, surrounded by the four beasts, call them cherubims if you wish, call them seraphims if you wish, but then God has another category called ophanim. Some people say ophanim, but some Bibles will say, or some books of reference will say ophanim, P-O-P-H-A-N-I-N-O-M. I think ofanin is singular, ofanin in Hebrew, plural. 
And then below that, God will have prophets. And then below that, God will have the true fivefold ministry. And below that, God will have his church in its different capacities with helps and governments, each one having a part to play. So where do you come with the word of Anim? We know about Cherubim, we know about Seraphim, but Ophanim, it's from the book of Enoch. Now I want to take my time, I'm not in no hurry, I'm in a hotel, and I hope that you who are watching, you have not programmed yourself for a certain amount of time because you want to watch some soccer or watch some movie or something or go into barbecuing some meat. But because it's a Sunday morning, we want to honor the resurrection. So let's give it time. You see in Genesis 32, 30, when Jacob meets those angels, he remarks, I have seen the face of God. Angels making the face of God. You are such privileged people that you sit in your homes with exactly what Jacob saw. In 1963, seven angels come, they make the face of God and you have seen it. Now in Hebrew, you call the place Genesis 32, 30, you read from there. He called it Peniel. There are different derivatives of the word Peniel. In some places, it's called Phanuel, P H A N U E L, or even Ophiel, O P H I E L. All those are different titles of our almighty God. We are going to show you as God has different titles by which he operates, appears and disappears, the devil has copied from God's order. When he fell into disorder, everything the devil has is not original. He has twisted it from the word. So if God, has Peniel, Samuel, Ophiel, later you will see Raphael. Well, the devil also has those titles and we are not in a hurry. In Exodus 32 verse four, when Israel forms the molten cuff, where did they get the idea from? Well, the answer is easy. They had been in Egypt for 400 years plus. The worship of a golden calf, <coughs> excuse me, or a molten calf is the worship of Hathor. H-A-T-H-O-R, Hathor. Hathor is symbolized as a golden molten cuff and represents fecundity. Fecundity means to make babies everywhere. Notice it does not say to make babies in marriage, which is allowed. To make babies everywhere. And today, we are aware that such people exist on the earth who sow their seed like oats. Leave a baby here, leave a baby there, leave a baby everywhere. And Hathor was associated with alcohol and orgies. That is why you have a saying today, woman, wine, and song. Now I want us to come to Second Chronicles 21, 11, and I want to read it with you. Second Chronicles 
21, E11. Finding it, I read. Watch in Second Chronicles 21, verse E11. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication and compelled Judah thereto. I'm going to loosen this little tie a bit. God bless you. Now, fornication. <clears throat> we have just come out of two very powerful and very informative sermons on the danger of fornication. And there it is, fornication in Jerusalem. And spiritually speaking, Revelation 21, Jerusalem, I'll show you the bride. And he was shown that new city, Jerusalem. So these things are happening even among bride members. And it will keep on happening, but the true preachers will keep preaching against it. Now the word fornication, I want to pause. Among the fallen angels that fell with Lucifer is an angel called Phornius. F-O-R. And EUS. They say he is associated with rhetoric, talking. Yes, there's that serpent in the Garden of Eden, came to Eve with a lot of rhetoric and caused it to fun commit fornication. And guess what? Phonius as an archangel that fell under Satan, governs 29 legions of demons. So church, it is no joke. It is not easy for a true minister who can preach on many other nice things like they do on TV to decide I want to attack this fornication spirit. I want to take the bull by its horns. I want to attack Phonius. Because you know what happens when a man and a woman come together. There is a release of a hormone called oxytocin. And this oxytocin is intended of God to bind the men and the woman together, which is why fornication must be avoided. Phonius must not come into play. Then in Numbers 22, verse 5, we hear of a false prophet called Balaam. Balaam, what a name. Balaam the Moabite. Balaam who deceived Israel into committing fornication and adultery. Can you see these demons work together? And guess what? Balaam is the name of a demon that fell with Lucifer. He is the 51st demon in the rank. So even the devil has his own order in his disorder. That's why in Revelation 2.14, it speaks of the doctrine of Balaam. Balaam caused Israel to sin in the flesh. So Balaam and Phanias work together. If demons can work together to attack God's people, why on earth do God's people not wake up? And let us work together to resist the devil. 
in Exodus 16 and verse 8, God warned Israel against seven nations. Seven of them, go read about them in Deuteronomy 7. The Perizzites and the Hittites, and God names them all. But the greatest weapon that God, the devil used against God's people was to murmur, murmuring. You'll find it in Exodus 16, verse 8. Did you know that murmur is the 54th demon in the devil's rank? And the prophet says there's nothing that kills faith faster than a murmuring Christian. Watch out. If you murmur prayer like Hannah did toward God, that's all right. But if you're murmuring against this, that, that one in the church, well then, the 54th demon in the legion and rank of Satan's fallen angels has taken a hold of you. Now we come to Deuteronomy 13. 13. We read of the word Belial, B E L I A L. It's pronounced Belial. Did you know that Belial appears again in 1 Samuel 2, verse 12? And here are the priest's sons are called Belial. That is a very deep teaching on serpent seed. Just like Isaac and Rebecca nah, in the proper lineage. Because Abram said, don't take a wife for my son from among these. Go back to my people. And here when Isaac and Rebecca come together, Jacob and Esau are born. One is true seed. The other one is false seed. And here we see sons of a priest are called sons of Belial. Then we come to 1 Samuel 25, 25. Here we read that Nabal, 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 the husband of Bathsheba, was a son of Belial, but he lives in Israel. He comes from one of the 12 tribes. I hope you are reading between the lines. It doesn't mean everyone in the message, not even in the priesthood, behind the pulpit. It doesn't mean they are all God's feet. I hope you are realizing it. Some of them have got such power behind pulpits, but when you look at the spirit, it's not of God. It's the scriptures. Then we come to 1 Samuel 30, 22. David had an army of men that followed after him. The Bible does say some of them were because of distress. Some of them were in debt, few of them had the revelation that David was anointed to be king. So others had reasons for following David. And the Bible calls him in 1 Samuel 30, 22, men of Belial. <laughs> Again, God wants us to sit down and sober up. That is not enough to say, I'm in David's army. I'm in the message. I'm in the message. Who is moving you? I'm going to tell you who Belial is, but let's identify first Kings 21, 10. Here again, you come to read of the name Belial. I want to read it with you, first Kings 21, 10. 
First Kings 21.10, I found it. Finding it, I read. And they set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king. And then carry him out and stone him that he may die. This is now the story of Naboth, accused by Jezebel. And get two men who were false and they were liars, and the Bible calls them sons of Belial. Last but not least, Second Chronicles 13, 7. Let's read Second Chronicles 13, 7. Finding it, I read. Watch that name Belial coming again in Second Chronicles 13, 7. And there are gathered unto him vain men, the children of Belial, and have strengthened themselves against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. There you go. They are in the same Israel. They are representing another kingdom that is opposing Rehoboam. Rehoboam, who is in the lineage of Adam through David, through Solomon. So don't sleep in the message and think that everybody in the message, whatever church they belong to in the message, will be for you. Scripture teaches me that among the same kingdom, the same community, others will rise against the legitimate sons of God. Last but not least, Paul warns the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 16. I beg your pardon. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 15. 2 Corinthians 6, 15. And Paul asks the question then. He says, what concord? What agreement, what affinity, what joining does Christ have with Belial? None. You know why? Because Belial is the name of one of the ranked top demons that fell for Satan and fell with Satan. So these demons Fallen demons sowing disorder everywhere are still here in June of 2021. Sowing discord everywhere, but on the other side, there are angels that never fell. The prophet says in the message, oneness. He says, we are not those angels that didn't fall, but they have an influence on us, so we won't fall either. I have a question that I've had for many years. It will probably be answered when we get over there. The prophet said in the church age book, we showed it a quote. He says, some unanswered questions we have now will be answered when we get over there. Since these angels fell for Satan's lie, do you want to tell me by now they haven't come to realize that God's word is true? Why have they not come to repentance and say, Lord, I made a mistake, I'm coming back to you? Why? The prophet says, because Satan is such a liar. He keeps convincing them. Let's keep trying to break the word. At our next attempt, we may succeed. And once we succeed to break one part of God's word, he can't judge us on the day of judgment. 
So they keep going. And then they comfort themselves by the majority that follows them in their fallen disorder estate. And they are saying, well, more are with us as are with God. So the lie continues. But in Ezekiel 28, 14, Satan is unmasked. He is exposed and he is called the anointed cherub. I want to stop right here. Though fallen, though in disorder, he still has the anointing, but it's a, he is false. That is why his children today, the prophet identified them under false anointed ones. Not the anointing is false. Uh, that's where it goes deep. The seed in them is false. But if they have this anointing, and if you cannot separate the two, you will fall for them. The power of Satan is that though a fallen cherubim, he is the anointed cherub. And in Daniel 10, 13, when the angel must bring answers to Daniel, the angel says, I was hindered in my mission for 21 days. Hindered by who? He says, the prince of Persia. Oh, I'd like to read that with you, if you don't mind. Daniel 10, 13. I, I, I like to read it because of the power of impact. It says here, from verse 12, then said he unto me, fear not Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst get thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself, there we go, what a sermon right there, not loose, carefree people, Walking into this message church, walking out and walking into another just living a carefree life. No, God is looking for us to chasten ourselves, self-rebuke. Look at yourself in the mirror. Don't reflect the mirror on others. He says, before thy God, thy words were heard. What? And I am come for thy words. But watch that big word, B-U-T. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. The prince of the kingdom of Persia. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, meaning one of the chief cherubim, came to help me. And I remain there with the kings of patience. So wait a minute. This angel talking to Daniel says, I was hindered for 21 days, but Michael came to help me. Michael is another of the archangels, but Michael is another of God's garments. Michael means who is like God? We will answer that in a little while. Who is like God? Question mark. Why 21 days? I did a little bit of reading. If you can get a hold of the book of Enoch, which I possess, I have. Try and get it. Daniel, I beg your pardon, Enoch goes into these angels and the two angels that came to Daniel, the one saying, 
I was withstood, but Michael came to help me. You need to understand the order of God's angels as opposed to the disorder of the angels of Satan. Why 21 days? Are you ready? Satan has many demons under him. But I'm going to go very slow and identify you the 21 top demons. You'll understand why 21 days. Each day that angel was hindered in the spiritual realm, there was this battle still going on by one of the 21 demons, top demons, fighting the whole day against one angel, another one coming the next day, the third day, the fourth, until Michael came to help. And after 21 days, after fighting and overcoming 21 major fallen demons, the message reached Daniel. Shouldn't that be a lesson to us? That sometimes you pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and it looks like the heavens are shut. Yes, God is fighting through those demons to get through to you. But are we patient? Most of us, we give up by the first day. We say, God didn't hear me. We don't read scriptures. Here's a man more righteous than many of us, Daniel. And God tells him, I fought through. Sent my angel who fought Michael Cain 21 days later. Why 21? Are you ready? Here are the names of the 21 top fallen angels of Satan. Samja, Artakifa, Armen, Kobabel, Turayel, Rumjal, Danjal, Nakail, Barakel, Azazel, Armaros, Batarjal, Batarjal, Busa Sejal, Hananel, Turel, Sima Pesir, Jetrel, Tumayel, Turez, Rumayel, and Azazel. I'm amazed that Azazel is named under number 10 by Enoch, and there's another Azazel in the position of 21. This had me thinking very deep. So even the devil has two angels by the same name. Sometimes you wonder why an evil thought comes this way. As soon as you overcome it, the same thought comes from another angle. <laughs> Oh, Lord, have mercy. In Ephesians 2, verse 2, Paul calls the devil the prince of the power of the air. I'd like to read it with you. Ephesians 2, verse 2. We read. Wherein in time past, you walked according to the course of this world. This world has got an order. It's a fallen order, the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. So you see, the devil has another title, the prince of the air. Not only is he called the prince of Persia, there's even a movie by that name. 
for goodness sake, wake up. Now it's called the prince of the air, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. That is why in Daniel 12 verse one, and I'm going to read it with you before we close. In Daniel 12 verse one, we read, we are going to identify this angel. Daniel 12 verse one. And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which stands for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble. So Michael is always that angel on God's side that stands up for you. And in Jude 1 verse 9, let's read together. Jude 1 verse 9, we read again the following words. Jude, just a minute, 1 verse 9. There it is. Yet Michael, the archangel, other places is called the prince. But over here he is told, we are told, yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Michael rebukes the devil by saying, the Lord rebukes you. We better have revelation right there. Michael rebukes the devil and says, the Lord rebuke you. That's why in Revelation 12, verse seven, here he comes again. Revelation 12, verse seven, and there was war in heaven. There you go. John is going back to Isaiah 14. John is going back to Luke 10, where Jesus said, I saw Satan fall out of heaven. In other words, I cast him out. In Revelation 12, verse 7, he says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels. He has another title, Satan is called a dragon. So right there, Michael who appears to be just one of the angels turns out to be God in another form. Because it is Christ who cast out Satan. And over here, it is Michael who fights against Satan. So you had better be able to place these names and these cherubims. One God who can manifest himself in many, many, many ways. Does God have archangels? He does. Can God masquerade and appear as one of those angels? He can. Look at Wormwood, when Wormwood drowned the earth. <laughs> And it was God who said to Noah, get thee into the ark. I'm going to drown these people. <laughs> so either you were saying God sent another angel called Wormwood, correct? Or correct when you say God transformed and took the position of a drowning angel, you are still correct. It's God in it and through it all. That is why then when Paul writes, you must read with me Hebrews 1 verse 3. Who is Michael? Paul identifies him in Hebrews 1 verse 3. And here it comes. 
Hebrews 1 verse 3, he says, who being the brightness of his glory, what? And the express image of his person, there you go. That's the meaning of Michael, the express image of God. I used to look at this scripture and look at it again and again. It does not say expressed, because that will put him in the past. It's a present tense word. He is the express image of God. Present tense. You see, Michael is the express image of God. God cannot be seen. For us humans who have seen him, he came in the body Jesus Christ. It does not make Jesus Christ the second or third person of the Godhead. It's God in another form. Same God. Now look at Philippians 2, verse 6. Philippians 2, verse 6. I'd like to read that before we taper down. In Philippians 2, verse 6, we read, it says, but Christ, my own words there, because you read the entire verse, chapter, but Christ, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. In other words, Thought it not robbery. He knew he's not robbing God by saying he's God because there's no other God. When Jesus said, all power is given unto me, some lazy minds are saying, oh, if it is given, somebody gave him. That's a one way of reasoning. But the prophet says, if he says, all power is given unto me, he says, if there are two other gods, they are powerless. See, there are two ways always. The lazy mind says, oh, he says power is given unto me. So somebody gave him the power. Therefore, Christ is the second person. No, the prophet says the other side. If he says all power is mine, if there are two, three, four, ten other gods, they are powerless. I worship none other but the Lord Jesus Christ. The express image, present tense. Now what? Is it not so that in Matthew 10, 25, they call Jesus Beelzebub? Do you know Beelzebub is chief of the fallen demons? It's another nickname for the devil himself. Matthew 13, 19, isn't the devil called the wicked one? In my, Mark 5, verse 9, there's a man who's delivered, and the demons, before he's delivered, the demons say, we are legion because we are many. Didn't give us the amount, but we are legion because we are many. And yet in Matthew 26, 53, when Jesus was going to Calvary, he says, I don't need help to go to Calvary. Don't you think I could ask? And legions of angels would be sent to help me. So it's showing you that on the left hand side, some legions fell in disorder, and on the right hand side, some legions remained with God. That's why in Matthew 17, 21, the disciples couldn't cast out all the demons. Some of them are highly ranked. And Jesus said, this sort, watch that word, this type, it means there are different types of demons. This sort does not go on except by prayer and fasting. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen. 14, beware Satan transforming himself as an angel of light, as a preacher. Oh Lord have mercy. Oh, Jesus of mercy. That's why in Revelation 9, 11, John identifies a fallen Lucifer. He says he's called Abaddon 
or Apollyon. Abaddon, Apollyon, is the angel of the bottomless pit. And that is why in Revelation 9, 16, this angel of the bottomless pit, Satan himself, leads 200 million demons. Indeed, the Bible says in Revelation 12, 9, that old serpent, Satan and the devil, to know your enemy is half the battle won. Satan is not your friend. That's why the Lord Jesus warned us and said, when a man who is cleansed by the gospel backslides, watch. He says that demon that used to live in there goes out but comes back. That's where most young Christians are not aware. You feel good when that spirit leads you, but he's going to come back to inspect if you have been filled with the Holy Ghost. If you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, he's smart. He knows that when he was alone, he was defeated. So he gets seven more worse than him. There's the word. Seven more demons worse, meaning ranked. And the state of that man will be worse than when he started. Oh my. Second Peter 2 verse 4. And Jude 1 verse 6. I'm closing. Second Peter 2 verse 4. You can parallel it with Jude 1 verse 6. The one verse will say these fallen angels who lost their estate. First the estate are now reserved in chains of darkness, everlasting chains of darkness, but they are still busy. God will finally destroy them with the spirit of his mouth. That's why in Revelation 20 verse one, God will have a chain of circumstances. Brother Venom says not a log chain. He will bind that devil, for a thousand years and destroy him at the end of the 1000 years after that final battle. And it is Michael who binds this dragon, this demon, this Lucifer. And in the book of Enoch, Enoch says, Michael binds Semjaza, another name for the devil. And the same Enoch goes on and says, and Raphael, binds Lucifer. You know why? Lucifer brings diseases. <coughs> Raphael, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer, Raphael, God our healer, he binds Lucifer when it comes to you in diseases. I close with first John 4, verse 4. Folks, we've seen order, that the devil turned into disorder, but God continued the order in the heavens and in our lives. And now we are hearing scary names, demons, the devil with different names, and 21 of his top generals, and sometimes people without the Holy Ghost, they start shaking and the teeth start gnashing. They say, oh, what do we do? Well, I have good news for you. With 200 million demons under the devil himself, he still hasn't gotten you to deny the message. You are one person, but you are overcoming Satan with 200 million. You know why? Because the, the standing order of God's angels are behind you. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. From London, England, I greet you.